Hi, thanks for tuning in. The purpose of this presentation is to let you know about the current plan for Bellingham to start producing and land spreading toxic sludge biosolids. My name is Kirsten McDade and I am the Pollution Prevention Specialist at Resources. While I am certainly passionate about protecting the environment, particularly the place I live, my background is in science and science education, and I have approached this problem much like a research thesis. It's about reading as many research articles that I can and reaching out to the various experts in the field, attending biosolids workshops and collaborating with other community members and organizations. The presentation that I'm going to give you today is a result of these efforts and collaborations. So when you hear me say we, I am referring to this community. In particular, special thanks to Sierra Club members Darlene Shanfeld, Rick Eggert, and Judith Atkins. Resources is a nonprofit organization working to protect the climate and the environment and communities of the Central Salish Sea region. So as many of you know, the Post Point Wastewater Treatment Plant needs to replace their incinerator that is currently burning the sewage solids. The incinerator is old and emits a lot of greenhouse gases. The 2017 Climate Action Plan calculated that sewer utility emissions could be reduced by as much as 60 to 80 percent if replaced with a different technology. A variety of technologies were looked at and analyzed, and in the end, anaerobic digestion was chosen as that new technology. One of the criteria evaluating these technologies was quote unquote, meets current regulatory requirements and is highlighted here to emphasize what this means. Current regulatory requirements, the 503 sludge rule created by EPA and the general biosolids permit written by the Washington State Department of Ecology are based on science from 50 years ago when we did not fully understand the chemical makeup in biosolids, nor did we have nearly the amount of chemicals we do today. These regulations only require facilities to look at nine metals. No other contaminants are regulated. Raw sewage, sewage sludge, and soils are not tested or monitored in Washington State for any other contaminants. There is no Clean Soil Act to give legal protection to our soils. We are not suggesting that the City of Bellingham won't meet these basic requirements when they begin producing sewage biosolids. What we are saying is that the current regulations are out of date and that they are not protective of human health and the environment. And we are not the only ones saying this. Ecology has received dozens of letters from organizations, law firms, and individuals who believe that the biosolids general permit is not protective enough. Currently, biosolids regulation is under review both at the state and federal levels. Raw sewage comes to the treatment plant from houses, businesses and hospitals, industrial facilities, and stormwater drains. The liquids are removed, treated, and pumped out to Bellingham Bay. The sewage sludge or solids will go to the anaerobic digester. In this warm, oxygen-deprived environment, the bacteria digest the organic matter in the solids, but it does not digest most of the chemicals of concern. The Clean Water Act means that our wastewater effluent is much cleaner today. But that means our solids that are left behind are more concentrated than ever with toxics. Digestion is really good for digesting food, carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. Enzymes easily break the bonds between carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen, much like a handshake, firm but not super strong. Digestion does not break other types of bonds, such as those between carbon and chlorine and fluorine. This is like adding handcuffs to the handshake. Enzymes for these bonds do not exist, and that is why these chemicals are called forever chemicals. They will be found in the end product of biosolids that are then spread on land, often land that we grow food on. There is an abundance of research to show that there are thousands of chemicals in sewage sludge, hundreds of which are considered hazardous to human health. The EPA has shown this, USGS has shown this, Countless other research papers show this. Research also shows that contaminants from sewage sludge travel once applied to land. They are suspended by wind, 
run off with rain, migrate down the soil column, seep into groundwater, and can be taken up by plants and animals and incorporated into the food web. These contaminants can be found thousands of miles away from their original source. They are finding them in animals in the Arctic, for example. Forever chemicals do not disappear. They just get transported from one place to another and from one organism to another. This particular study looked at antibiotics on land applied with biosolids compared with land without application. Antibiotics were higher in the soil, the earthworms, the mice, and starlings in the land with biosolids. In addition, kestrel nesting success was lower. Another study showed that worms uptake antibiotics and that the antibiotics accumulate in the worms, and then, then it becomes available to other organisms. Another study in Maine showed that the level of PFAS in cow milk exceeded the amount in the soils themselves. This shows how chemicals like PFAS can biomagnify up the food chain. And most of you know, humans are pretty high up in the food chain. This recent study looked at nine biosolid products purchased at places like Lowe's and Home Depot, including one from Tacoma wastewater treatment plant called Tagro, and found that they contained 24 of the 33 PFAS the researchers were looking for in concentrations that can be harmful to human health. Eight of them exceeded screening limits developed by Maine, the only state currently that has guidelines for PFAS and biosolids. I point this out because Washington State Department of Ecology is also looking into more stricter PFAS regulations. What if Bellingham biosolids do not meet these future regulations and the product can't be sold? We will then have a hazardous waste product on hand. What do we do with it then? We live in an industrialized nation and we are subjected to a lot of different toxics from a lot of different sources. Biosolids are not the only source. It is clear that we are paying the price though. Childhood cancers and leukemia, infertility and other reproductive problems, including a 50% decline in sperm production shown here, learning and developmental disabilities, autoimmune disorders and diabetes are all on the rise. We have the opportunity here at home to stop the reintroduction of some of these hazardous contaminants by not allowing the land spreading of biosolids created in Bellingham. I often hear folks in the biosolids industry talk about levels of risk and that the amount of contaminants found in biosolids needs to be put into perspective. Quote unquote, there's more PFAS in a cake baked in a nonstick pan than there are in biosolids. But I don't believe that a thorough ecological risk assessment can be done on biosolids because there's too much variability. Models and assessments are only as strong as the data. There are thousands of chemicals and biosolids that change over time. For example, a pandemic can change the amount and type of discharges coming from the hospitals. Or a first fall rain event after an unseasonably dry summer will change the concentration of contaminants in stormwater. We don't understand the harmful effects of most of these chemicals. Most chemicals are not adequately tested for safety before they are used. And lastly, we don't know exactly what will happen to chemicals once they are applied on the landscape. Where will they go? Action needs to be taken at the local level. In a recent meeting with the Director of Ecology, Laura Watson herself recommended this line of action. Because we can't wait for federal and state regulations to become more protective. We can't wait for reducing or eliminating the production and release of toxic chemicals into our sewage system. We can't wait for affordable technologies that can remove toxic chemicals from sewage. These are all happening now and need to happen they just take a lot of time. In Bellingham, we can make the decision now not to spread toxic sewage biosolids onto our land. What are we asking? We are asking the city of Bellingham to look beyond conventional methods, these ones on top here in blue, and investigate alternative uses, the ones in red below, for sludge biosolids. Because, you know, when has Bellingham ever been considered conventional? 
Just recently, Edmonds has decided to replace its incinerator with a gasification unit. If the city is determined to continue with the idea of land spreading sewage biosolids, then we would like proof that they are safe by having extensive tests performed. We would like transparency in those tests, what tests are used, when were samples taken, what was tested for, and how were the risks evaluated? What is considered safe for a chemical that doesn't break down? What can you do? please take the survey on the City of Bellingham's website. Email Robert Johnson, project manager, or email city council and the mayor with your concerns. You can stay up to date by logging into Resources website, receiving text messages, and following us on social media. Thank you so much for listening. Feel free to reach out anytime with any questions or if you just want to have a conversation. Thanks.